Well, I went there yesterday, but there wasn't anything really going. What? What do you mean the red light's blinking? Oh, we're on the air. Oh, my good. Hola! Hey, 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 hey! Woohoo! Mr. Warrior here at your service. Oh my goodness, I had a hot mic there. Hot mic morning. Hot mic. Yes, I had no idea. My producer, you know, doesn't let me know when, hey, it's time to go. And you know what, my friends? It is time. That is right. It is time for us to do another, I always say, wonderful math lesson. I hope it's going to be very informative for you. Now, what are we doing today? Well, it looks like we're doing algebra. Woo, algebra. An Arabic word, actually. Algebra and lesson 6.9. Ooh, yes. I mean, we're moving toward the end of the chapter here. And now it looks like our topic for today is patterns with fractions. Okay, well, mathematics is all about patterns, and that's I just love the idea that we're going to have patterns with fractions, so I'm really excited about today's lesson. Let's take a look at what our essential question is. It states, how can you use addition or subtraction to describe a pattern or create a sequence with fractions? Ooh, scary. That's right, super scary. Yeah, for somebody who's not ready for a math challenge, yeah, we are, though, because we're fifth graders, and you know something? We rock. That's right. Now, I don't know. We rock at something. Yes, math. Okay. Okay, Mr. Wara. We really can't do anything, though. There's something really important you need to do. Oh, that's right. That's right. It is. Unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world problem here, my friends. Real world. Now, it states Mr. Patrick wants to develop a new chili recipe for his restaurant. Each batch he makes uses a different amount of chili powder. The very first batch uses three and a half ounces. The second batch uses four and five six ounces. The third uses six and one six ounces. And the fourth uses seven and a half ounces. If this pattern continues, how much chili powder will he use in the sixth batch? What a great question. Okay, first thing I like to do is I like to see our friend here, Mr. Patrick, with his little chili. What do we got? Oh, look at them. Look at his focus. Very focused on his boiling pot. Yes. For his special recipe. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Mr. Patrick, we just wanted to check in on you, see how you're doing with your chili. Yeah. How's it going? Really, Mr. War, you're going to start talking to pictures now in the actual Go Math series? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I thought I would try. It says you can find the pattern in a sequence by comparing one term with the next term. Okay, a term. That's right. We talked about a term. Like a number in between, like, operational signs. Two plus three. Two is a term. Three would be a term. Cool. Well, let us first look at Step one, it says write the terms in the sequence as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. Then examine the sequence and compare the consecutive terms to find the rule used to make the sequence of fractions. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, did that make a lot of sense to you? Oh my goodness, this is some high level stuff you guys are doing here. So let's take a look at a couple of words here. First of all, we know what equivalent fractions are, but we're going to be looking at that sequence. And it does say we have to actually even write the terms uh, in the sequence as equivalent fractions. Okay. Then it says to examine the sequence. So we're going to look at it carefully. We're going to compare consecutive terms. And consecutive in this context simply means that like follow in a row. When I think of consecutive days, I kind of think of like in a row. So these are all going to be in that sequence in a row. By looking at that, we're going to be able to find the rule used to make the sequence of fractions. There must be some kind of rule going on in between each one of these terms. So a couple of things I want to do before I start, and that's unpacking this problem, things I need to kind of understand. Now, the amounts of chili powder based on that problem, they've changed, and it, each additional batch keeps increasing. So there's something that we definitely want to make sure that we understand about the actual problem is that the amount of chili powder here is increasing with every additional batch it means we need more chili powder to make that happen. Now we have all our terms in a sequence. Now I wonder the importance of putting these terms with common denominators rather than just, oh, it might be more difficult to compare them. 
we want to get these out as an equivalent fraction so we can actually maybe see the pattern that's occurring in that sequence of numbers. Three and a half has a denominator of two. And I also have seven and a half has a denominator of two. But the other two have denominators of six. It seems like it would make more sense then to go ahead and put this in as six rather than halves because I can't put a five six as a half. So here I could put three and three six so that I have that same denominator because three six does equal one half. Now here they're already telling us the rule. So they let us know that that that, that movement from here is one and, and, and two six. So that's the rule here that's being added. And then the three six to five six, that is true. Because if I put the second term, you may notice right away because you guys are just awesome fifth graders. Look at, there's a difference between 3, 6 and 5, 6 is 2, 6. And the difference between 3 and 4 is 1. So that's true. Now we're going to go ahead and put, well then, if that's the rule then, we're going to go ahead and put that 1 and 2, 6 up here. Now 6 and 1, 6, we'll add that in here. Now is that true? Did it increase by 1 and 2, 6? Uh, looks like the whole number. Yeah, we, this right here, the 5, 6, we only needed 1, 6 to make it another whole to make it 5. So if we were to take 1, 6 off of the 2, 6, that would leave 1 and 1, 6 that I need to add on to the 5. So the difference here from 6 and 1, 6 and 4 and 5, 6 would be 1 and 2, 6. So this is the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and write this down again. And now 6 and 1, 6, I need to add that on. Well, I have at least, I have the 6 and the 1, that makes 7. And then, of course, the 2 and the 1 makes 3. And because I'm dealing with that common denominator of a 6, I'm just going to bring the 6 over. Nice. And there's batch 1, batch 2, batch 3, and batch 4. Awesome. Yeah. Woohoo. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so step 2 says write a rule that describes the pattern in the sequence. Is the sequence increasing, getting larger, or decreasing, getting smaller from one term to the next? Well, we just kind of talked about that. We basically said, yes, it was increasing. I'm going to write this down here. It was increasing. And actually, I could put the increasing. The rule here would be 1 and 2, 6 here, or uh, 1 and 1 third. Here, it was definitely increasing. Uh, that's all there really is to it. Increasing 1 and 2, 6 greater than the term before it. Okay, there you go. Step 3 says extend the sequence to solve the problem. Okay, so I have 3 and a half, which we already decided I'm going to write right on top of this so I can see it, make it make more sense to me. That was 3, 6. Here we had another 3, 6. Right, right on top. That way I can compare. These are the exact same terms that we were using. So now I'm just adding an additional 1 and 2, 6. So maybe I should do one of my little loop-de-loops here so I can see that number in front of me, 1 and 2, 6. And by looking at that, I can see that I can add the 7 and the 1. That's going to give me 8. That was the whole number part. Then the fraction part, I have 3 plus 2, which is 5. And of course, the 6, we just bring it on over, right? We don't have to add the 6 together. We just bring that 6 over because that is our denominator. And now we can go ahead and add another 2, 6. So I'm just going to kind of follow the pattern that was up above. Now, in this case, we're going to go over. We have that same situation where I have a 5, 6, just like here. Okay, same pattern. So I'm going to take 1, 6 away from the 2, 6 up above here. And I'm going to add it to this guy because that's what we're doing anyway. This is all being added. Well, that would make it a whole. And then that would give me 9. So I'm going to go ahead and put in then. I would have 9. But you know what? Then I have another 1 and 1, 6. So 1 and 1, 6 plus 9 is going to be 10 and 1, 6. Because I had that 1, 6 left over after I added 1 in there. I had 2, 6. So Mr. Patrick will use, that's right, 10 and 1, 6 ounces of chili powder in the 6th batch. Okay, boy, I think that takes care of page 1. Moving on. Page master. Here we go. Example. Find the unknown terms in the sequence. That's an indication that my sequence is decreasing. And look, we started with that much. And look, it got all the way down to one quarter. Okay, so we're definitely decreasing. Step one, write the terms in the sequence as equivalent fractions with a common denominator. That's what Mr. Wara was just getting ready to say. It's almost like, like the lesson knew what I was thinking. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the first one since I see sixteenths is the largest multiple 
of 8 and 4, it would be better to use the larger denominator. That's what I would do. And that's going to change his very first term now to 1 and 12 sixteenths. Now I'm just doing this in my head. All I'm doing is I know 4 to get to 16, so I'm going to have to multiply by 4 fourths. And that's basically what I did here. 4 fourths gave me the 1 and 12 sixteenths. And then this next one's good because it has a denominator that we are wishing to use. And then the next one we have eighths. Well, to get sixteenths, I need to multiply two over two. That's going to be six over sixteen. Now my next one, again, we're good. We already have the denominator that we want. Yeah, this is cool. Now with seven sixteenths, we're good because it already has a sixteenth. We're good. With a quarter, we're right back where we with the fourths, and we have to multiply 4 over 4. Well, in this case, it's going to be 4 over 4 is going to be 4 sixteenths, because 4 is 1 fourth of 16. The denominator is all the same, so we don't really need to look at those right now. And we know the numbers are decreasing because we end up here with a fraction. We no longer have a mixed number as we do in these first four consecutive terms. But if you notice, 12 to 9, what happened? What happened to the 9 to the 6, the 6 to the 3? And when you look at them closely, you can see there's a rule. Maybe I should go to step 2. Write a rule describing the pattern in the sequence. What operation can be used to describe a sequence that increases? Well, that increases, what operation? Addition, of course. What operation can be used to describe a sequence that decreases? We talked about that, getting less, subtraction. And now our rule here, this is what we were just looking at. I made the determination that it was decreasing, but 12 to 9 is a difference of 3. There's a difference of 3 from 9 to 6. There's a difference, remember difference means subtract, of 3 uh, with 6 and 3. So you know what? It's decreasing by 3 sixteenths. And I can even double check that by saying, well, if I were to take 3 sixteenths and add that on to the term in front of it, would it get me back? And it would, 3 sixteenths plus another 3 sixteenths would give me 6 sixteenths. And then, of course, my whole number part is 1, so I know that it's only 3 sixteenths. Now, it says use your rule, step 3, use your rule to find the unknown terms, then complete the sequence above. I think I can do that. I will give it my best try. Yeah, I sound like Forrest Gump here. Okay, then complete the sequence above. Now, I'm going to subtract this 3 sixteenths from each term. So, if I subtract 3 sixteenths from here, that's going to be nice and easy, right? Just one. Yeah. How easy is that? I'd say that's pretty easy. And then, uh, so I had one, so if I minus another 3 sixteenths, so I would ask my, myself this question. Well, how many sixteenths would I need, right, to make one whole from 3 sixteenths? Because that's really what I'm subtracting. I'm not counting up. So I would say that because there are, in this case, 13 sixteenths, cameraman. So 13 sixteenths plus 3 sixteenths. Do you see how that is 16 sixteenths? And that makes our one whole. So what I'm going to do is take my whole and then subtract, leaving me with 13 sixteenths because that's what would be left over. And then it gets really easy because we're subtracting another 3 sixteenths. So that's just going to bring us to 10 sixteenths. And of course, 10 minus 7, right? Is three, and so it all works out when everybody's happy. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Even my camera crew, they're happy. Yes, the problem worked out. Thank you, Mr. War, for not making us have to redo the video. No. Okay, so that's always nice. Now, do we have some more? I think we do. Bring it down, down, bring it down. That's right, we have. Try this. Try this. It's okay. It won't hurt you. Try this. That's right, we're talking about math. It will not hurt you. This is a great time. Since we don't have any scaffolds here, we don't have any structure, no step one, step two, step three, you're on your own. So I would say, put the video on pause, then work these problems out on your own, and then say, now I'm ready, and then hit play, and come back. I promise, I will still be here. <laughs> so A says, write a rule for the sequence, then find the unknown term. So I'm going to put one, and I'm going to leave the twelfth there, because remember, that's the largest denominator there. See, now I can look at them. I can see what's going on here. Am I seeing minus 3 twelfths? Let's find out if that's true. Minus 3 would be 7 twelfths. Does that work in my... Yeah, 7 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 4 twelfths, and 4 twelfths minus 3 twelfths is 1 twelfth. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah! Okay, did that one kind of loud? Sorry. Woohoo! 
Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do B. It says write the first four terms of the sequence. Rule, start at one quarter, add three eighths. My goodness, come on Neanderthals. Cave people, quick, I know you invented fire. Let's see you do this math problem. <laughs> yeah, it probably took them thousands of years to finally figure out how to make fire, but hey, I bet I could teach these guys how to do this problem in a day. Anyway, oh my goodness, I kind of hear the music there in the background. It is time. The video just, woo-wee, just flew on by. Man, felt like I was going Mach 3. Anyways, my friends, again, this is all possible because you participate with me with these videos. I really appreciate you coming now. Live long and prosper.